Happy Wednesday, everybody. Can you believe it's our final show of 2021 already? No one? Oh. <laughs> no, it's okay. Ha- happy Wednesday, everybody. I am here with Carrie Crutcher from, and this is a mouthful, we were just talking about this, Ridgecrest Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I've been sweating all day to say the word bureau. Nailed it. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, thankfully, I don't work for the FBI and I have to say it all the time. But it's also shortened down to R-A-C-V-B. Yes. Right? Okay. Perfect. That one's so much easier. (sighs) Now that we got that part out of the way. Hi, Carrie. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you. So real quick, I'm going to shout out to everybody that this is airing before the city council meeting tonight. So afterwards at 6 p.m., jump on over to their YouTube, uh, City of Ridgecrest, and be sure to watch that. So. Today, we are going to be talking about a lot of things that the RACVB does, new things that opened up, as well as the Petroglyph Festival, right? Yes, we've been busy. (laughs) Really, really. And the holidays are coming up. So no no pressure, no pressure. (laughs) But speaking of the holidays, I always like to start with a little fun fact for everybody. Okay. So what's your favorite Thanksgiving food or dish? Potatoes. Any kind, mashed, <laughs> cheesy, you name it, potatoes. I, I, I've been married for 17 years, and just this week, my husband and I had this conversation because he never knew. I only eat turkey and potatoes on Thanksgiving. I don't want what? any of the other stuff. Yeah, that's all I want. That's all I eat. <laughs> it's like, how did I never know this? I don't know. I just sit with my potatoes and have a nice little day. Did he just <laughs> so, not pay attention? He has he like, does he have a plate full of food oh, yeah. usually? Okay, all, that's- the, all of it, and I just want turkey and potatoes. So oh. I will admit on Sunday, I cooked a full Thanksgiving dinner Oh, just because. Just I've been, for fun? Just for fun. Oof. I was a little stressed. And my husband's birthday is the 27th. So I always have a second Thanksgiving dinner to cook for him sometime okay. during the month. So I was like, happy birthday. You're getting this early. <laughs> and he loves stuffing. Yeah. So I'm s- currently in the hunt for a waffle maker Oh, to make waf- stuffing waffles. For your bread for your Thanksgiving leftover sandwiches. Oh, you're a good wife. <laughs> eh. That's good. I'll he, keep my eyes peeled. He was like, he saw it on Pinterest, and I was like, first of all, why are you on Pinterest? <laughs> Second of all, I love this idea. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's good. I feel like um, we both know Kelly Walden from Ridgecrest Cinemas. Yes. I feel like she would have a waffle maker. I'm sure borrow. she must, and she'll whip out any kind of waffles. And they'll be delicious and wonderful. She's the resident <laughs> chef in our life. <laughs> that she is. She is. I love um, that she just randomly bakes bread. Like yeah. I randomly make a full Thanksgiving dinner. She, yeah. You guys are impressive. I barely <laughs> feed my children. Like with everything oh, I don't that's do been that. going on. Thankfully, they're older. So they kind of have been fending for themselves. But My yeah. four-year-old has a snack drawer. He can survive. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you can't be good at everything. So no, no. It's okay. He's, yeah, he's made it this far. In yeah. He'll be off to college next yeah. week. <laughs> All righty. So let's dive right on in. And what is exactly is the general function of the RACVB in our community or surrounding communities? Yeah. So the RACVB, um, we exist basically to bring visitors into Ridgecrest okay. um, to stay in our hotels, eat in our restaurants, shop in our foods. It's a huge economic boost when we're able to bring those um, outside dollars into town. Okay. So we do marketing um, for the Ridgecrest region as well as a lot of other things that we'll probably dive into. But our yeah. main function is to bring visitors to Ridgecrest. So tourism. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll just start there. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys just opened a new welcome center? Yes. How is that? <laughs> It's wonderful. So we are the 21st California Welcome Center in the state. Oh, wow. Um, there, The state office of tourism is called Visit California. And Visit California um, has an, a network of 21 visitor centers. And they're kind of um, super duper visitor centers. Um, <laughs> It's not just our welcome center. It's not just walk in and get a brochure or, a, you know, a keychain or. It looks very interactive. It's really, yes, it is. We really focused on the visitor experience. So inside our welcome center, we have several different experiences. Okay. So while you're here um, getting in for information on our area, you also, you know, 
can do do things inside the Welcome Center. So we have a virtual reality experience, which is really cool. What? Yeah. Um, we have two virtual reality headsets. And so um, when you come into the center, everyone is welcome and it's free to try it out. So we have one experience that focuses on Death Valley. Okay. And so it's like a five minute virtual tour of Death Valley and it's incredible. That sounds a lot cooler and a lot safer. Yeah. For me. It, than <laughs> going to Death Valley? Yeah. Yeah. It's very cool. Um, we're we're nice in a and breezy. controlled building. <laughs> yeah. And you guys are at what was previously Goodwill. Yes. Over. Eight, yeah. Go ahead. So 880 North China Lake, right next door to Tokyo House. Okay. It's the old Goodwill building. Okay. But we completely um, remodeled the inside of it. It. So I saw the pictures from opening night, yeah. which it was November 5th. Yes. Okay, so right before Petroglyph right. Festival, because go big or go home. Exactly. <laughs> and we lived. <laughs> no you one guys. Did no it. one died. We've all recovered. I will cut us off right here and ask why was there a camel? So going back to the experiences inside the Welcome Center, um, we have an ancient California kind of exhibit, and so it. It highlights the petroglyphs in our region, which we can okay. touch on because that is a big part of tourism for us. Mm -hmm. um, but it also talks about um, ancient camels and how they used camels back in the day. And um, so it all tied in. Really? So, yeah. So part of our ancient California exhibit focuses on camels and how they were used in our region and in Death Valley because they're, you know, I tolerant. I literally and, only yeah. thought we had donkeys in this no, area, camels. like from... Gold mining days. Yeah. Come in the Welcome Center, check it out. Yes. But um, so once you are in the Welcome Center, then it made sense that we were having camel rides for our grand opening. Okay. So we just wanted to do something that was really fun and just kind of different. And so we had the Petroglyph Festival going, and then we also had the um, grand opening going at the Welcome Center where we were offering free camel rides. So it was just kind of a fun extravaganza. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It was nice. It was different. People seem to enjoy that that led into going into the Welcome right. Center. Yeah. So I'll admit I have not gone yet. We both have been spinning a lot of plates, I think. Yes, definitely. And I'm like, I'm excited to go see. And ex now I, I mean, put on a virtual headset and hopefully I don't run into anybody. But <laughs> so we have chairs. You can sit in the oh. in the chairs. They're three. They spin three sixty. Um, oh. But back to the virtual reality. So we have the Death Valley experience. And then we also have a, a petroglyph experience, um, virtual reality experience, because um, our region has the largest concentration of petroglyphs in the Western Hemisphere. So on oh. the base in Little Petroglyph Canyon, um, it's an incredible petroglyph experience. And so... Um, have you been in person? I have not. Oh. I know. So they do the tours in the Matarango Museum, host tours in the spring and in the fall. And um, with COVID and really since the earthquake, petroglyph tours have not been open. Okay. So because of that. But um, once we COVID is over and once the construction on the base is, I think, at a better place, mm -hmm. um, the base says that they'll be reopening for that. So it's That's really awesome. cool. But so... Since that isn't available right now, we have an alternative in the Welcome Center now. So we still can kind of bring that culture and that um, experience to our visitors without having to go on base for now. I remember one of the first times I ever saw a petroglyph, we were up at the grinding stones. Mm -hmm. Or is that what they're called? They're the old grinding stones where they used to like... I think so. Make things? I don't know. My <laughs> uncle's going to kill me. And I would go up there and I was like, what are these little drawings? And my son's over there like putting rocks together, trying to draw on there. And right. he's like, no, it's petroglyphs. And I was like, oh, it's history. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't, don't do that. And I that's know. what led into a uh, little petroglyph canyon. Right. He told me about that story. He's like, you should go. You so should check been? it out. No, I have oh. not because there's been no tours. Right. And now this makes some more sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can see that the city has kind of adopted the whole petroglyph thing mm -hmm. as kind of our identity with all the art that's all over town and everything. So, um, and then with the petroglyph festival too, um, I think we'll probably touch on that, but yeah, it's just a good, um, it's a big part of what we do with tourism, yeah. focusing on that, um, native American heritage. And we have a lot of people, we actually have an international following. 
with the Petroglyph Festival. Really? Yeah. Let's so, go ahead and just okay. jump around and talk okay. about Petroglyph Festival. Okay. So um, it was fun to be there and see everyone dressed up in their native attire. Yes. Uh, heritage attire. I know there's a specific. Right. Yeah. And seeing like the ring dancers and yes. I was like, this is a whole thing. Yeah, it is. And so this was the eighth year of the Petroglyph Festival. And um, with each year, so this was my fourth year with the festival. And, and this I was like, was held on November 6th and 7th. Yeah. Okay. It's the first weekend um, annually, the first weekend in November. November mm -hmm. is Native American Heritage Month. So it's a good, it's an it ties in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, time to do it. But so four years ago, I came to the festival and I didn't know anything about any of that. And so I kind <laughs> of have, I don't know, baptism by fire just kind of was thrown into it and met like people in the archaeology field and just a lot of that. So I've learned a lot about it and it's really cool. Oh. Um, but with the festival each year, we just really strive to just um, make it less of like just a carnival, you know, and just right. bring in more and more elements of the Native American history and the culture. So um, this year, thankfully, we had a few tribes that were participating. Um, COVID was still a factor, even though we tried to not make it a factor. Because it's outdoor. It and so we were able to just be outdoors and have a really good event. But um, some of the tribes, actually several, weren't able to participate because they still were under more strict restrictions and so is it tribes native to this region, this area? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There are several. Um, so this year we had, I think, three that were participating. And so um, we were able to highlight, we had them on the stage and they were dancing and telling stories. And um, what we were going to have someone from up north um, doing a basket weaving um, demonstration. What? That fell through at the last minute. Yeah. So just cool stuff like that. Like just bringing again the experiences, mm -hmm. so you're not just shopping and you're not or not just walking and shopping and eating, but you're able to just kind of learn, you know, from those um, demonstrations. It's, it's history, literally yeah. live action. Yeah, totally. <laughs> it totally is. Okay, I'm on board for the basket weaving next year. I know. She'll I'm, be here. I'm really here for that. <laughs> I'm letting my 87 year old grandma soul come out. <laughs> yeah, me too. It's gonna be cool. Huh. Okay. So. What is the significance exactly of bringing it here to Ridgecrest versus anywhere else, like a bigger city, bigger area, the tourism aspect and bringing the amount of petroglyphs we have? The, yeah. Okay. With the, what is the significance of having the festival here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, the going way back to history, you know, like prior to Ridgecrest, <laughs> prior to whatever. Oh, okay. It is it is our history, and it is our heritage and our roots. So if we can kind of highlight that mm -hmm. and bring that to the world, then that's significant, you know. And so it's here in our valley. So we just really try to highlight that and educate people on that. And with the international following, does that include people that come just as tourism, or does that include other tribes coming to support the festival um it's more for tourism okay when i again going back to when i first started i was so surprised when i saw our um, website analytics and seeing that people in germany and people in you know just a lot of europeans um were coming to rpfestival.com to check it out and i just was t totally shocked by that but what what i've learned is um People who live internationally are more intrigued in our American culture than I think Americans are. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, here we are. We live here. We've never seen it. But we have people internationally who are more interested. So I think that's a big factor. Um, and then also just because of our geographical um, nearness to Death Valley, which also has a huge international yeah. interest. So it's kind of a twofold thing. That's something um, part of the Royal Air Force men when I met some of them and they were like how do you guys live here and like it was just we were this weird little bubble yeah. that they were so intrigued by and I was like it's the desert and this is the wind this is normal right and they're like but there's literal tumbleweeds rolling across your road and I was like 
Yeah. Please don't tell me this is how we're represented nationally <laughs> no. or internationally. Yeah. So desert, but yeah, people come though from all over the world to Death Valley, and so and then going back to tourism, we're able to capture a lot of those travelers mm -hmm. um, and encourage them to stay in Ridgecrest because we do have fifteen hotels and restaurants, and so um, so that's a really good opportunity for us to capture those literally millions of visitors to Death Valley each year. And that's nice to have the new Welcome Center as a central place to explain all of that and right. showcase our right. little town. Yeah, and Ridgecrest is really cool. And so, like, we, um, I guess we're just bouncing all over, but let's, going back to the Welcome Center and what we're doing there, we, and the fact that we are focusing on experiences, we mm -hmm. also have a film and TV experience in the Welcome Center. Because okay. we have so much filming that goes on in our region. So the RACVB, um, we also manage the um, film commission. So almost all of the filming that goes on in our area is permitted through our office. So that would be like Planet of the Apes mm -hmm. and Trona Pinnacles. Mm -hmm. What is it? Iron Man in yeah. Alabama Hills? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look at you. No, my um, all of it. So <laughs> Top Gun. <Exactly. laughs> Yeah, that one was a big one for the area. But um, so in the Welcome Center, we have the exhibit where we highlight um, several of the big productions that were here, like um, okay. Lady Gaga was here. Doing oh, she, her Stupid Love video was filmed at the Pinnacles. And she, um, didn't that win an award? Like the visuals? I believe that might have won an award, and I can did it go I back and look on the comments on that. Okay. I feel like it was showcased somewhere. Um. I'm losing track of the years now, but I think it probably was. Not this year, but okay. previously. Okay. Yeah. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. but um, I need my phone a friend. Award, I know. Award <laughs> or not. Um, she has a, a just mega following. Mm -hmm. And so um, we just kind of try and leverage that a little bit. And, and we have, so um, people who are Lady Gaga followers... I have seen and talked to them. They saw the video, and then they are coming here because they want to, like, be where she stood and go to the really? pinnacle. And Oh, yeah, totally. There's a huge social media, like, movement that these fans just travel around and go to the different places. So, again, so... How do like, they... Like, what job do they have to just travel because... They're, maybe they're influencers? I don't know. Oh, they're maybe. Students. I don't really know who they are, but they do it. And so, um, so it's a thing on social media. So in the Welcome Center, in that experience, we have, um, we'll have GPS coordinates to the different spots where some of the big, big stuff was filmed. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something that will really attract those fans. So just cool stuff like that, that we can show that Ridgecrest is more than just like China Lake Boulevard. <laughs> you know, there's right? a lot that goes on here. You just may not recognize it at first, but the Welcome Center really highlights all of that stuff. I will say I appreciate it more now than when my parents tried to make me appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Like going to the Pinnacles, so fun now. Right. And like doing things out in the desert. Yeah. And it's weird to know that people hunt that out. They but absolutely do. It's so unique. Yeah. Like they just want to go where she stood. Yeah. And take 100%. a rock. <laughs> we also, um, Rihanna filmed a video there at the Pinnacles a few years ago, and we received um, interest from an international group of Rihanna super fans that want to host tours here next summer going to the Pinnacles. What? Yeah. So we said, okay, come on. <laughs> come on out. Stop by. Say hi. So, like, those no are the things way. that we um, – that we're involved in. And, again, so now we have groups. We have tours of people coming to Ridgecrest um, in our hotels and our restaurants wanting to go to the place that Rihanna filmed her video – so it's really, it's really neat. It's a way that we can contribute to the community economically, and it's really fun. So one little fun fact that I put in here was Top Gun Maverick just mm -hmm. won a special award. Did, yeah, it did. I say we did. Like, Go ahead. No, we yeah, did. absolutely. <laughs> no, we'll claim that for sure. <laughs> yeah, um, location manager of the year, I think. Is that, do you recall? Um, I do know movie. Top Gun Maverick California on location award winner for the scenes specific to China Lake. Yes. So. Got that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exciting. Um, and once Top Gun is released. 
been waiting. That'll be fun. We'll just be able been to have waiting. fun with that. I know. <laughs> so I am like a Top Gun little fanatic. Are you? I am. I okay. So I had never seen it, and then what? a few summers ago, when the theater was doing all the retro movies, mm-hmm. that I saw it in the theater like three years ago or whatever it was. That was so. one of the first times um, back when I was working there that Kelly and I made time to sit down. <laughs> Like, schedule in a time to watch a movie yeah. together. And How fun. We even had, like, on our shirts, like, Goose and Maverick. <laughs> and I keep trying to convince my son, because my husband won't do it, no matter how good of a wife I am cooking Thanksgiving, <laughs> he won't be Goose and Maverick with me. Oh. So I was like, you know what? This is why I had a mini-me. Yeah, there you go. And he wanted to be a T-Rex this year. Mm. He's like, Mama, I don't want to be a pilot. And I was yeah. like, but, buddy, it was filmed here. See all those planes up there? That's, that's you. Yeah. That can be you. T-Rex was more fun. It was more fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, but that's amazing. Like, people reach out to you guys to film in the location area or yes. anywhere mm-hmm. close to us, Lone Pine? So, or? Our, our region spans um, up right to Lone Pine, um, out towards Barstow to... Um, it's, a, it's a big region. Like I was going to say, wow. To Boron, it's huge. So all of the BLM land that's in kind of that um, area falls under our um, jurisdiction, if that's the right (laughs) word, for permitting. And so we work with um, BLM, Bureau of Land Management, to um, do the permitting on their land. Because most of the desert land is BLM land. So we have a working um, agreement with them. So one thing that just popped in my head, um, I'm an American Horror Story fan. Now, their last season had a Death Valley twist to it. Ah. Were they filmed here? So, Death Valley is its own region. Oh. And so, I don't know. I don't watch that show, but I don't know exactly. Sorry, I can't answer that one. No. But I was just going to think. They do yeah. filming there, um, but they just have their own um, management for that. That would be the only thing. I don't, I'm not part of a super fan group or anything, and I don't think I could bring any <laughs> there tours. Is one. But <laughs> I will try. <laughs> so an additional thing that RACVB does is Sports Commission, which mm-hmm. I kind of looked a little bit of researching, but I wanted to speak with you more about what is that exactly? What does it cover? What sports? So, events? Right. So we, um, RACVB oversees tourism, filming, and then we also operate the Ridgecrest Sports Commission. And again, um, the main goal there is bringing um, people to the area then for sporting events. Mm-hmm. So if it's off-road events, um, if it's, I'm telling you what's huge, is youth sporting events. So softball tournaments, oh, okay. tournaments, like those types of things. So we work with um, some of the youth sports groups and Thankfully, we've been growing, actually. Um, we've been seeing um, a lot more softball tournaments and those types of things. So, again, mm-hmm. that's huge because if you have, a, let's say, a softball tournament over a weekend, you have 16 softball teams for, like, an average size tournament, okay. which means 16 softball teams worth of families. You know, it's not like 16. It's, it's 16 teams and then yeah. the families and then – over three days and they're in our hotels and they're eating and they're so, um, wow. Yeah, that is a, it just funnels out. Right. Exactly. And then you calculate like community spend. So if you're here for the weekend, staying in a hotel for whatever reason, you probably are going to run to Walmart for sunscreen or, you know, those types of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, there, that is a big area that we have, we have a lot of room to grow in the sports commission. Okay. So now that we have the Welcome Center open, that was our focus for like 2020, 2021. So um, we'll just kind of fall, fall into whatever the new normal is with the Welcome Center. Mm-hmm. Um, but then as far as growth goes, we're really setting our sights on growing the sports, um, sporting events in our area. Okay. There's so a lot of room there. A lot of the youth events and then off-road events you yeah. mentioned. Off- and Yeah. That's Off-road events are kind of the low-hanging fruit. You know, they come and they camp and yeah okay so um that is an area that we can grow to but um yeah and we work with a few different off-road organizations um so yeah well that's good to know I mean especially for the main youth experience 
to see that grow right in town right because i mean if we're bringing tournaments here that's going to support our local youth absolutely sport functions the baseball football softball exactly what else is there soccer soccer mm -hmm. football that's it's like it's basketball. I know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it absolutely does support our um, groups as well. Mm -hmm. That's amazing to yeah. know. So, lots, lots so how do. does someone get in contact if they want to do filming or bring so, sports to you? Yeah. So um, you can call our. You can call the Welcome Center. Okay. Um, that's the easiest way. Also, you can visit our websites, um, goridgecrest.com and filmridgecrest.com. Okay. You can get in touch with, with us that way. We're also on Instagram and Facebook, all the usual. Go Ridgecrest, though. That's the easiest way to find us. Go Ridgecrest. There we go. Yeah. I think that was the one um, during Petroglyph Festival. I was trying to tag you guys on, like, a picture on Instagram, and I was like, I cannot find them <laughs> to save my life. <laughs> and then three days later, after I was at the festival, it popped up, oh, and I was yeah. like, of course, there it of is. course. Thank you, big yeah. brother, for helping me late. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, go Ridgecrest. That's the easiest way to find us. Well, I'll be sure to drop that information in the comments for you. Okay. And thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. And this the, was fun. The little history of our region. Yeah. So annually, first weekend in November, yep. Petroglyph Festival. Yep. And then go check out the new experiences at the Absolutely. Welcome Center. Yeah, come in and say hi. That's what all of you guys have to do this weekend. <laughs> okay. Just yes. saying, just yeah. saying. We'll be open. <laughs> well, thank you again, and we hope to see you next year before the Petroglyph Festival. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, one thing I will ask, actually, thank you for participating in the Wine Walk this year. Mm, yeah. Thank you. So, for the You're Petroglyph welcome. Festival. Thank you. Yeah, the um, Petroglyph Festival was a sponsor of the Wine Walk, and yeah. so it was fun. It was, it was so good to have so much to do. There was a lot to do that weekend, but it was like the festival and then in the evening go to the wine walk and so it seemed like it was a huge success i heard nothing but great things yeah. that weekend so just reiterating to the petroglyph festival um friends of the fair and to flight line right definitely so. flight line carried a huge amount of the workload on that but it was a huge success and it ended up being a really good um fundraiser for the fireworks show so yeah, it was good. I think it was 11,000 yeah. for mm -hmm. next year's fireworks right. show, yeah. which is a huge start. Yes. <laughs> yeah, in one night. So it was really good. Total it was success. fun. It was just different to see it back and like yeah. pouring wine there. I've been there before, like drinking the wine mm -hmm. and just hearing everyone, we want this back. It's so exciting. Right. So yeah, it was good. Thank it you. It was a perfect that. night to bring it back too. So hopefully, I think we'll be able to carry it on, not monthly. But periodically, you know, if it's an annual event, that's exciting. Yeah, that's yeah. a good start. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> Thank you again for being here. And everybody, again, at 6 p.m., head over to City of Ridgecrest's YouTube channel and check out tonight's city council meeting. Have a great rest of your week. Bye, guys. <laughs> I don't think I stumbled.